I'll, I'll come back to this in a moment, but we actually, it turned out we had cross paths in 1967. So we go back almost 50 years now. And uh, my sons uh, look on Bon Nathan as an, as an uncle. They send their regards. And it's, uh, it's been a great, uh, a great relationship. Uh, let me talk about his FIU career for a moment. It's been put in uh, excellent perspective. So there's not much more that can be said. But since we're counting, um, founding uh, chair of uh, religious studies when it broke off from philosophy, getting it up and running, uh, establishing BA, MA degree, uh, making it into a, a solid uh, department. Um, <clears throat> founding director of the Center for Spirituality. That was a whole new project. Eric explained it well. And I, I can say that uh, universities like Brown and uh, UVA, prestigious schools like that, have, have since, in part learning from Nathan's model, uh, started very similar kinds of programs. So that's a wave of the future. Um, so that's two so far. Um, uh, the Jainism, being the first uh, chair in, in Jainism, helping to recruit that money and establish it and make, make FIU a solid place to house, house a, you know, a very uh, specialized program, but it's got, a, it's got tremendous potential here and, and it's been supported by the administration. Um, so that's, uh, uh, that's one more. Um, uh, the Jewish Museum, of course, in his, his last couple of years, um, because Nathan doesn't just cover one uh, topic. He, 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 his expertise spreads out in so many different directions. And so he can take on Jewish studies and Buddhist studies and Jain studies and, and spirituality uh, all in the, same, in the same career. And he manages to fit it into his name card, all those titles. Um, and um, bringing the Dalai Lama here several times. Um, and I remember the first time, I think it was 1998, maybe? Um, Nine. It, 99, yeah, and it was my mother's uh, 80th birthday, may she rest in peace, and, and I had to be out of town, so I missed that event, but that, that was, I, I think it was probably one of the Dalai Lama's first visits to this part of the country, or, you know, really got a lot of attention. When I was in Japan that summer, people were saying, oh, FIU, uh, you know, Dalai Lama was there, so that's another hat that he's worn. The whole dialogue that John mentioned, uh, you know, uh, Jewish-Muslim, um, uh, Muslim Jewish Christian and then um, you know Jewish Buddhist Jewish Hindu uh, all, all these uh, areas uh, brings us up to some more topics and I'm sure I'm sure there's more that uh, other people can can uh, allude to so it's it's been a never-ending path let me just make a few brief comments on my personal relationship so we met in 1974 in graduate school Nathan had come back from uh, his first Fulbright first of four I, I realize now um, <laughs> And he um, had spent several years, um, well, you, you, I know you had traveled, uh, no, I guess, I guess you hadn't come back from the Fulbright, you were about to go on one, but you had traveled extensively in, uh, in India and in Asia, and he had all this expertise. So whenever the fellow grad students had a question for the professor, the professor would always say, ask Nathan Katz, he's an encyclopedia. <laughs> and if he didn't have the answer, he knew exactly how to get the answer. In those days, no Googling, no, no internet, so you had to actually have books and go to the library for a change. And uh, Nathan knew every detail, how to find out the resources. It was, it was just amazing. So we all looked up to him. Uh, we didn't use the word cohort in those days, but you know, looking back, we had a cohort, and Nathan was the uh, de facto leader. He, he was a year ahead of me, but he was light years ahead of me in terms of his ability to understand and finesse and, and really uh, excel at academic um, uh, scholarship and research and, and what goes with it, the networking and the goodwill and the collegiality and building, building the bridges. So um, he, um, uh, at, at some point we realized that our paths had crossed in 1967. In fact, our pictures were on the front page of the old Philadelphia Bulletin, the afternoon uh, daily newspaper in those days. And of course, uh, Nathan was in the forefront of the picture and I was in the background. Um, but, um, uh, you know, that, that uh, uh, set us an even uh, stronger uh, relationship. Um, now, when it came time to finish our PhD, it was a very competitive environment. Um, for those of you who remember the, the job market, never great in, in um, you know, in, in the academic world, especially in liberal arts, especially in a field like Asian religions. But it was especially challenging then. Um, Big recession, big budget cuts to higher education because of the glut of, of um, people who got jobs in the, uh, in the 1960s in the great society environment. Uh, there just weren't many positions opening up. And, and you know, um, in a year, there'd be literally five, four or five 
jobs in the whole country in a field like Asian religions. And Nathan Katz, in a year where there's only a small handful of jobs and, and you know dozens and hundreds of people are competing for them, had not one, <laughs> not two, not three, oh no, I should say three. He had not one, not two, but three job offers when most people were deciding to go to business school or change their career path. And uh, he took, uh, and, and two of them were in New England, so that says a lot, right, John? Uh, You're <laughs> damn right. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, you know, uh, why Nathan? Well, you, you know, look at his resume back then, and then you had to type up a hard copy, you know, and so it was outstanding. He knew exactly how to identify his strengths, how to put those forward. He uh, got his PhD, he already had an edited book published. He had organized at national conferences. Um, he, his name was widely recognized by the leaders in the field. That's a little more common these days, but back then, uh, 35 years ago, very, very unusual. So Nathan excelled from the beginning, and he's excelled at the end of his career. So congratulations and best wishes for your new pet. Thank you.